Hello, Ivy Podcast listeners. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. I am your podcast host, Angela Alberti. I've had the awesome privilege to be able to sit down and speak with many different people across so many different verticals. Um, if you're listening into today's show, then this is part of the very special female uh, uh female empowerment series that we're doing through the IV podcast. And that's certainly the case with Megan, who I have the awesome privilege to sit down with and just have a dialogue on some of the things that she's doing at Keep With and how this whole company came to be. So Megan, can you give us a brief um, overview on yourself? Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, Angela. So I'm Megan Raudabush. I'm the founder of Keep With, and we are a platform that is helping the world network better, build stronger relationships. Um, I started the boring grown up answer is that uh, I started the company in 2017 when I was getting asked to speak and write a lot about networking. Um, I spent my whole career in the financial services industry. Um, and once I started to get asked to speak and write about it a lot, I thought, hey, I think there's a company here. Yeah. Uh, the the awesome. real answer is that I grew up in New York City as a kid reporter. And so from the time I was eight until I was 18, I was a professional journalist traveling the world, interviewing grownups about really important world issues, grownups and kids, actually, to be fair. And so as a kid journalist, I learned the answer, uh, excuse me, I learned the importance of asking questions mm -hmm. and caring about the world. And so to me, that's what networking is. And that's absolutely true and so critical in today's times. I mean, um, uh, we're, we're living in a world where everyone's or at least having the privilege to work from home. Um, so I, I have to ask top of mind, you know, what I hear about what Keep With is doing, which is so awesome. What was the pandemic like for you guys? And did you guys see, uh, this resurgence going back into, Hey, networking and the, the vitality that it lends itself culturally. And just from a development perspective, overall for companies across the board. Great question. So networking at its very core is building relationships. That's really what it is. Uh, and we have lived through an unprecedented period of time where human isolation has been at its peak. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, it's so interesting because it became, networking was hard before the pandemic. And then when we had to really get creative, I mean, welcome to my kitchen, by the way, um, <laughs> my, my superpower during the pandemic is how quickly can I do the dishes before a podcast interview? That's awesome. Um, but to, to be more serious, um, we saw human isolation at its peak and how we build relationships change too. It might look more like sending a text to somebody um, to ask how they are, micro gestures, but what the pandemic did for Keep With was it let the world know what we already knew which is that human connection is essential and it can be really difficult. Uh, and so it allowed us to be creative. We've established some technology. Um, so we're really excited about our superpower of helping to bring people together. And, and during the pandemic, that's never become more obvious. Absolutely. But you know what? I want to take a deeper dive in going into uh, your career timeline from compliance to start up networking platform. You, you, you got to spill the beans. How did this whole thing happen? It's funny because I think compliance has this Darth Vader reputation uh, in, yeah. in the financial <laughs> services industry. So how, how does she build relationships? I started out, uh, started my career as a paralegal at a large law firm in New York City, where I'm from, and was just randomly assigned to the investment management group and didn't know what investments were and didn't know what investment management was and fell in love with securities and how they work. And so I went off to law school and did my JD and my MBA and did anything securities or compliance focused that I could get my hands on. So really just the integrity of the markets and, and what the right thing is to do at a time when the markets were imploding globally. So it was really interesting to become a compliance expert when the global economic downturn was taking place. So I built my whole career uh, in compliance, uh, graduated in 10 when the economy had done what it did. And so I built my career, uh, ended up at Deloitte for a period of time, uh, helping large financial institutions with complex regulatory matters, uh, spent some time doing anti-money laundering work at, at a large global bank, uh, and then landed my first chief compliance officer role at a registered investment advisor here in Chicagoland because I talked to a stranger on the 703 train platform. So we can talk about that. He's now our technical co-founder. There you go. Hashtag networking. Um, <laughs> and on the day when I took that role, it was also when I was getting asked to speak and write about networking a lot. So I said, hey, I'm your compliance person outside business activity. I sometimes get paid to speak about networking, mm -hmm. uh, fully disclosed it, um, and was doing both. By day, I was building out the compliance platform for a registered investment advisor. And at night, I was taking calls with Hong Kong about our Asia speaking tour. Um, so built the company. And then over time, 
I keep with was requiring my full-time attention. And, and so now I'm, I'm full-time founder. We've raised close to a million in capital. We've released some technology into the universe and here we are. You know, it's pretty interesting to me. I've had, I've, I really have had the privilege to sit down and speak with so many different people across the board, across different verticals. Um, and one of the things that I think is so foundational to their approach when you're speaking to somebody that, that's had the ability to excel in a career is what has been pivotal for you in that moment. And so many of those responses have resonated with the fact that you're, you're networking, you're mentoring, you're finding somebody to help you and guide you. And I think uh, that you're, you're certainly a testimony to that. I'm curious though, if there's any elements from your compliance background that have helped somewhat inspire um, the tech stack or some of the approaches that y'all are taking at Keep With? Oh my gosh, I love this question so much um, because it's it's helped to, in, in many ways. Uh, first and foremost, being able to read a contract and, and understand the business implications, right. sure. But as a former compliance person, I know that there are platforms out there that don't take data privacy and security seriously enough. And so that's why there's no spam, there's no ads. Um, if I want to introduce you to somebody on my platform on Keep With, um, you both have to consent to the introduction before it proceeds mm -hmm. so that no one's flinging themselves at you. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, from a cybersecurity controls perspective, um, we've been really deliberate putting in additional layers of security and protection. And one of our investors who clearly has a vested interest in the success of our company and the health of the platform also happens to be a cybersecurity expert. And so she and her firm are doing the pen testing. Um, I like to say that we have the Girl Scouts on our platform currently uh, and uh, adult members of the Girl Scout community at this time. And, and so we really want it to truly be a safe place where people can build real relationships. So absolutely it has from everything from digging into the contracts and making sure deliverables are clear to the security and the privacy and the tech. And then when you're taking investor dollars, you have those compliance responsibilities, regulatory responsibilities, and, and prudence and fiduciary obligation to spend every dollar wisely. Uh, and so I take all of that very seriously. That's that's pretty incredible that you guys have taken those elements and really have drawn it out into the makeup of your team um, as well. And uh, one of the things that I thought was so interesting when we had a chance to to talk about this episode before was what you have had to do to just get funding um, and and capital to raise and invest into this new business. Can you walk us through that experience, perhaps for the fellow uh, female listening in and tuning in today's show? What what would be some um, of those experiences that you could share? Sure. So I think I would start off by just saying that there is inherent imbalance in the funding landscape. Women get 2% of VC dollars. Like, let's just pause there for a second, 2% yeah. of VC dollars. Yeah. And so in some ways it feels like you're climbing an uphill battle. And in mm -hmm. some ways you are as a female founder, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, you layer on top of that, uh, the fact that we're walking towards a recession and the markets are doing what they're doing. And, and so it can seem really hard, however, I would say to founders that strategic relationship building and networking is absolutely the way to land investors. Mm -hmm. um, you have to build relationships and build that trust in order to get an investor, especially as an early stage founder, to believe in you. Um, and you have to have a clear plan and you have to stick to it. Um, our funding story is interesting. It started last fall when uh, the person who had been our seed round counsel then became a lead investor and all of this traction and excitement started and more investors led to more investors. We've raised a pretty humble amount of money for seed round funding when you see these other raises that are huge, um, but we are grateful for every single investor dollar. I would also say that similar to the job market these days, the investor conversation is, is a two-way conversation. So mm -hmm. founders should select investors that are right for the company, that are right for them, who will add value. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not just about taking any money that's given or available. And that's important because an investor relationship is gonna last years and years and years. And you need to know uh, that, that the investor is the right fit, that they truly get what you're doing. And, and we are fortunate to have such amazing investors. We have many entrepreneurs on our cap table. Uh, and so we're just really excited about who our investors are, but it takes grit. And you have to continue to, to run your company, even if you haven't raised all the capital that you need to raise. We're still closing out our seed round and having conversations with investors at this time. Yeah, and I don't know if there's enough being said about how um, 
of a two-way street that relationship is. It truly is an intimate relationship that you're going to end up having at a business level um, with a, a group or a fellow group of people and knowing that each other is there to help each other grow for the right reasons and help leverage that and expand um, is, is truly vital. And I, and I can speak to that from a level at, you know, what my base pay, what we're doing on, on my own personal side. So selfishly, there was some advice that um, I was able to take in from that question. Uh, I want to point out one of the, the statistics that you just mentioned on that 2%. Why do you think, give us your opinion on why do you think um, there is not as much being invested into female founders uh, when it comes to the VC space and the investment space in general? Well, and I want to caveat this okay. with a huge level of kudos for the effort that is going on right now to change this. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who are looking at this issue in terms of investment into female founders and um, underrepresented founders, founders of color. And, and so I just want to say that there's a lot of work being done here, but to move the needle, there's a lot of work that still has to be done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think uh, that the inherent uh, way that the infrastructure is built uh, tends to be very traditional, tends to be, uh, dare I say, male and Caucasian, the investment scene, yeah. right? And it's traditional in the sense of we need to see these slides with these metrics and these figures, and we'll look at a thousand decks and then invest in one company. Um, I literally had a VC say that to me once in a startup accelerator. I get a thousand decks, I whittle it down to five, and I invest in one. And it's like, okay, well, why am I sending my deck in, <laughs> right? Now that said, you can have a conversation with an investor where you say, hey, I'm creating a platform that's going to help people connect better at a time when we've had unprecedented human isolation. Wow. I used to be a chief compliance officer. We've raised some capital and here's what we want to do. We want it to be safe uh, and, and here's what we're up to. So mm -hmm. I, I think that there are some inherent inequalities, huge ones, problems, structural, foundational in the investment ecosystem now. And, and I'm just very grateful that there are a lot of people, some of whom are on our cap table, some of whom we would like to have on our cap table um, who are looking at that. What do you think about 2%, right? That That is just an egregious, it's like, well, why, why even talk about that number, right? But so many amazing companies are being built by women. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll just have to continue hustling. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I sometimes, uh, feel like uh, in, in certain cases, being a, a leader and a female at a company, and sometimes the only female in a boardroom, um, there's a certain uh, negative connotations that been, you know, happening with the way that females lead. And it's vastly different from what we've seen. But I see that in you, Megan. And, and just when you gave your pitch right now about keep with and the emotional appeal that that has, especially in the age of the pandemic, or post pandemic. Um, I wanted to just pitch in and, and ask you, what are some of those qualities that you feel that you inherently have as a leader that is particularly different against the grain of what we have generalized a leader to be in somewhat dominant, uh, you know, assertive? Do you feel like you are against that or not against it gen generally, but what do you think is different with the way that you lead um, from, from those typical characteristics? Well, I would say I for sure I'm assertive and I for sure I'm intense and and I have drive that I would say is unparalleled. Um, you know, you turn that up and down in terms of a volume knob. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that you can't be a founder without grit and without guts and without humility. Those are those are really important. Um, you know, I'm always learning, and I, I, I know we're going to talk about that. But I think from a leadership perspective, I think it's important to go strategic and look big picture and say, okay, where are we headed? What are our goals? Where are we gonna go with series A? How are we gonna build and get in the weeds as well? Wait, why is this button not working? Is this a bug? Do we have to figure this out? Yes. Uh, what are the details of this? Uh, okay. And so the ability to do that. Yeah. I also think that from a leadership perspective, spending time each week on your relationships is really important. Um, and just making that time to really work on, on those relationships and I would also say that you have to remember to shut your laptop and to walk away mm -hmm. <laughs> and to give yourself some time. As an entrepreneur, it can be a real grind. 
Uh, and so there's always going to be one of one of the people very close to me in my advisory board was like, there's always going to be a pile of stuff. And so you need to put it away and do the stuff or your, do those things for yourself that, that really help and not to to be cliche and talk about self care. But um, so, you know, I, I would absolutely say that I'm driven and I'm intense and you have to keep going. But I also know the importance of building strong relationships. And, and so there's time and place, there's style, there's knowing your audience, there's knowing those people with whom you can be truly, truly, truly honest, right? Right. Um, right. And, and then at the end of the day, it's believing in, in what you're doing and, and having that strong moral compass. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one of the things I thought was super interesting was the way that you guys have been able to expand. Um, and, and truly, you, you hear it, the keep with story. It, it really is embodying the value of networking at its very essence, especially how y'all have grown geographically across the country. Can you walk us through a little bit of what that experience has been like for the company and, and building these, you know, these followings around various metropolitan areas around the country? Yes, so it's really interesting. It, it's something when I look back, it's it's just become a way that we've done things. Uh, we have either had a connection to or relationship with a market, and so that just becomes the next market that that we focus on. Um, we happened. We were headquartered in Chicago. I, of course, was born and raised in New York City, but we soft launched in Dallas, and our first client was in Dallas. Uh, we soft launched and announced ourselves as Keep With, named Keep With once we were named and our name was registered with the US Patent and Trademark Office. So we soft launched in Dallas and Dallas just became really important to us. And one relationship led to another. And so Dallas is now a really critical market for us. So we just kind of took on Dallas. Um, then we had an Asia speaking tour that was in Tokyo and Hong Kong. And that in itself through a mentor is probably a separate question, but it, it built itself into a seven stop speaking tour. And so, of course, Tokyo and Hong Kong became very important, and we're returning to Tokyo later this year. Uh, so that's a really important market. Then we started to see, okay, well, our tech is being developed in Denver and uh, <laughs> by an amazing firm, Abbott Ventures, uh, who coincidentally has increased their sales 400% and reduced their cost of acquisition by 50% since using Wow. Them. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And as we spent more time in Denver with Abbott Ventures, uh, we started to get investors in Denver. And now we are starting to get clients in Denver. And so Denver is, is becoming a really key market for us as well. There's such a thriving startup scene there. Uh, and so, you know, what is our next market? Uh, we are going to Collision, the startup conference in Toronto next week, uh, which we're really excited about, hoping that that becomes a market where we start to really build strategic relationships. But it's been organic. Mm -hmm. It's been driven by our business need and the relationships that we build in each market. And we just take on a market and, and start to continue the network effect within the market. Yeah. Curious on how you are inspired by the name Keep With. So I learned as a founder, pro tip for any founder, mm -hmm. do not fall in love with the name of your company before you make sure that you can trademark, reg register it with the US patent. <laughs> I thought we were going to be named something else. I yeah. also hired incompetent counsel. So other pro tip, hire competent <laughs> IP counsel. Yes, that's done. Um, and so we worked with a naming firm. There are firms out there that will help you come up with a company name. And I okay. wanted two syllables. I wanted a clean domain. So keep with.com, not like the keep with networking.org, you know, yeah. something. <laughs> um, I also wanted as we grow as a company, and as a platform, I wanted the flexibility for additional verticals. We may do crisis management someday because crises are, are all solved by relationships. Right. There are some other things we have in the hopper about future business ideas. And so I wanted a, a broad enough name that it wasn't just the keep with networking company, but at its very essence, you are the company you keep. The people that you choose to surround yourself with um, really reflect who you are. And so keep with, is really meant to reflect that when it comes to networking. Nice. And some pro tips there uh, at the beginning, folks, if you guys are listening in, because gosh, we we went through something similar as well on, on the my base pay side. So very cool. Um, now, I know that uh, you are a, a mother as well. Um, so any tips, because by the way, uh, full disclosure, no one has this figured out. Uh, <laughs> but any, any tips that has helped you, Megan, in learning how to balance it all. And I love how you said one of them earlier, and that's just knowing to close the laptop and you got to walk away at some point. Um, but what has helped you juggle, you know, the founder the, of the tech company, the mom, like, and also trying to get yourself time. How do you do it on? How are you doing it all? 
So I'm, I, I would say, you know, that's such a, I love that you asked the question of like, how are you doing it all? Not like how to balance and there's work life mashup and, and all these things. I, I would say a couple of things. Um, people who know me know that I'm pretty emphatic about Peloton and that I love, I looked over at my bike. That's why my eyes just shifted. Yeah. Um, that platform and exercise is very important to me. And I happen to ride at 5 a.m. most mornings because that's yeah. the only time I don't need to be anywhere else. Yeah. But that's my time. Like that is my time. If I've had a rough day the day before, I need to really do that. Like that is something that I enjoy and that allows me to network. I ride on a team of amazing humans that we can talk about. Um, so that helps. I also think that I communicate with my daughter. She's seven. And I'll say, I literally just did this this morning. I was about to drop her off for camp. I still had to put the sunscreen on. And I said, baby, mommy needs to send one email before I put your sunscreen on and I take you into camp. That's a lot different than me being on my phone and ignoring her, yeah. right? Like, hey, babe, I just have to send one email and then we'll get everything taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that she's seen this company grow from our kitchen. And so we had three launch events in April and she said, hey, mommy, can I come to one of your parties? And we had a launch event in Chicago and one in Denver and one in Dallas. And, and I kept thinking of, of Whitney Hurd at Bumble and how she had her son on her hip when she went public. And wow. like, yeah, you can come to one of our parties. And mm -hmm. so it was important to me when I thanked everybody for coming that my daughter be there um, and that she see that, you know, she's asked, hey, mommy, how many investors do you have? Um, and so she wow. has seen that. And what is an investor? Um, and so, you know, I happen to be a single mom, right? So I juggle a lot. Uh, I always say we do sometimes have Starbucks for dinner because breakfast for dinner is breakfast for dinner. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it does come down to communication um, and knowing that I'm doing what I'm doing to provide a legacy for her and for our overall well being, right? So if I get a sitter on a Saturday night so that I can get some proposals out, then I get a sitter on a Saturday night so that I can get some proposals out. Yeah, that's awesome. That is some awesome feedback. And gosh, uh, also knowing to keep keep in mind a, a time block to yourself. Take the work outside. Yours is Peloton, you know. Mine. I I recently picked that up uh, as a new mom, uh, a newer mom, because I, I had a baby back in December. And uh, congratulations. It, it, yeah, thank you. It, it's been you know those forty five minutes in the morning is no baby, no work no emails. It's just time to yourself. And that's very, very critical uh, in that whole process. So thank you for that. Um, I, you know, it's been fantastic to talk to you. Um, one of the things that I, I definitely want to hit on and just speaking with you today is what do you think about networking and how it's aligned to the future of work? And I say this with some context um, when it comes to perhaps a generational impact that we can look to expect with millennials and Gen Zers now being a larger part of the workforce, how do you think that's reflective and gonna change in the way that we network? So there seem to be two parts to the question bubbling up. One in terms of how we're networking with new work from home and return to work and future of work themes, and then also the multi-generational uh, differences or nuances in, in how we build relationships. Um, from the on the first part of the question uh, again welcome to my kitchen mm -hmm. um we all are dusting off our skills on how to interact with one another so that's that's one thing um and being comfortable networking via zoom or the electronic uh, platform of your choice and networking in person is really important um, and that may look like smaller gatherings. It may look like you know picking up the phone and calling someone. It does look a bit different, but feeling well versed and comfortable networking this way or networking in person. And a lot of people are not a lot of people are not comfortable networking anyway. A lot of people are tired. A lot of people have had really awful last couple of years. And so interacting with people versus just staying in and watching Netflix mm -hmm. is a choice. Um, but being comfortable networking, uh, through electronics and also networking in person is important. I would say generationally, it is all of our responsibility in the workforce. I am 41, right? So an, an exer millennial, elderly millennial, is that what, the, I don't know what I am, but um, <laughs> the bottom line is it's everyone's responsibility to meet people where they are and to understand that there are generational differences in how we communicate and how we connect. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is something that's coming up in the workplace. It's really important, whether it be text, call, phone, any of the platforms and how we build relationships is the acknowledgement that generationally we network differently, geographically we network differently. Um, and so just being open to learning 
different ways to build meaningful relationships based on where someone is. Yeah. Some good stuff there. Um, you know, as we're wrapping up today's podcast, I'd love to just get some more insight into what your content diet consists of what's in the mind of Megan to keep you up to date on so many of the different areas that you've piqued an interest in. I read a lot about wellness and I, I think for me, that's because, you know, I have my water exercise, sleep, food choice, meditate for real Megan sign, which I put up in March of 20 and haven't taken down. Wellness is really important to me. It, it's quite connected to networking, but also it's just, it's my top core value because if without wellness, I can't do any of the other things I do. Right. So that may look like um, a book that I'm reading on running. It may be a book that I'm reading on executive motherhood. It may be, you know, so um, reading books about wellness and how they feed into into my life. I also, in terms of personal finance, I really, I think everyone could always uh, be learning more about that. Um, podcasts, I do uh, listen to several. Um, and I am currently really into the the, the Peloton ones. Um, but I'm also into uh, anything that has to do with how we build relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, reading a lot these days about, about wellness themes. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's great. And I do think that you make the investment in yourself then the rest of the, the benefits kind of transcend into other areas of your life. So 100% game with you on that. Um, where can we find you and where can we find keep with? Sure. So, uh, you can find me at Megan at keepwith.com. That's how you can contact me. Um, our platform is currently in beta. It's a paid beta, but users can sign up for keep with to use the platform that is at platform.keepwith.com. So that's how users sign up. Our website is www.keepwith.com. And then all of our social channels are, are keep with or keep with networking. I am definitely going to be signing up for that beta because I, I, I am a proponent and a believer in the value of networking. I'm so excited for you, Megan, and what you guys are doing at Keep With and, and uh, really we'll be cheering for y'all on the sideline. If you guys aren't connected with Megan on LinkedIn, definitely give her a connection as well. Um, some good stuff that she posts on there. Um, well, Megan, thank you so much for being on today's show and being part of the female empowerment series on the Ivy podcast. Um, I think that time is the most valuable gift that we can give to one another. And we appreciate you being on the show and also to our listeners for tuning in today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Likewise, likewise. All right, guys, we'll see you guys on the next episode of the Ivy Podcast. Thanks, everyone.